Hi folks, David Fine from Watch Your Lip. Guys, this is our Beach Fishing Fast Fish How-To Series where we are going to get you hooked up to a Silver King. Smile. That's right, this video is all about the tarpon uh, and how to catch them from the beach. Guys, this is a great video. Uh, a lot of information here. Let's get to it. Megalops Atlanticus aka the silver king that's right guys we're talking about the atlantic tarpon they they have a wide range from brazil all the way up to virginia and they grow to over eight and a half feet long there's been individuals recorded over 350 pounds guys this is a massive massive muscular fish and they have some really cool habits they actually can breathe air. So if you actually see a tarpon roll, what it's doing is it's actually coming up and taking a gulp of air and it helps oxygenate its blood. So this is a super cool fish and that gulping of air thing is something, an advantage that it has when it's fighting because these things never give up. They never give up. You hook a tarpon on the beach, you better have all your knots, all your line better be in perfect shape, your tackle better be perfect. You're, you better be ready because if everything isn't perfect, you don't have a prayer landing a tarpon. So guys, what this video is all about is we're gonna give you some, uh, some instructions on how, some little tips on how to catch tarpon from the beach. Uh, guys, typically, to be honest, we catch a lot of other fish. We target snook, we target um, you know, barracudas, jacks, snappers. Um, catching those massive tarpon is really really tricky from the beach from the shore so we're gonna do our best to give you some pointers on how to be successful with that tarpon begin to migrate down the coastlines uh, anywhere from April and you can see them rolling and you'll see big schools of them in May and June and then July all the way through October and through the fall mullet run guys you can catch tarpon on the beach They're, they literally will run very close. In fact, this summer we caught a bunch of them uh, feeding on the silver sides. So they, they crash these silver side schools. And these are typically the smaller fish. These are anywhere from 20 pounds to, uh, we, you know, we hooked a few that were 60, 70 pounds. Um, on, they're feeding on a, on a bait this big, a one inch silver side. Uh, the big monster tarpon, the 100 pounders, the 150 pounders, they are hanging off a little bit further offshore. You can get them in the mullet run for sure. They'll definitely eat a six inch pilchard. Uh, and so they prefer a little bit larger bait, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But guys, pretty much from April to October, you can catch them on the beach. They migrate down, they, they hang out in big schools. And so you can actually see them. You can target them with artificial. In fact, probably one of the better ways to get them is to see them rolling, you see the schools go by and you have a big like um, live target or spool tech lures, a lure with some weight to it or a big, you know, they have these great big um, plastic baits, swim baits uh, with the great big hooks on them and the weight. And you can really whip that out if you have a braided line and get it in front of those fish. And that can actually be one of the best ways to hook the beach tarpon, those big boys. Um, but typically we fish live bait at Watch Your Lip and so we're going to give you some pointers on how to get them using live bait. Come on, so as we alluded to earlier, when you hook into a big tarpon on the beach, you're in for the fight of your life. Most guys, when they're on a boat, you hook a big tarpon, the, the captain fires up the engine and chases the fish down because you don't want to spend an hour and a half fighting a fish if you don't have to. So you chase them down and make the fight smaller. Well, guess what, guys? When you're on a beach... There's nothing you can do. <laughs> you better have enough line. Your line better be in perfect shape and all of your knots and your rigs all better be perfect or you're gonna lose a fish. They, there's a lot of things that the tarpon has in its favor. The first thing is its size. They're huge and they fight. They're strong, powerful fish. They got a great big tail and that tail, they, I mean, they move too. It's a fast fish and then they jump. So when they jump, there's, a, there's an old fish saying, yeah. bow to the silver king. On, when that fish jumps out of the water, what happens is the line goes tight. And then when the fish is in the water, 
the, the water actually keeps the weight of the fish from putting the full amount of pressure on the line. But when the fish comes out of the water and it's jumping away from you, all that tension comes perfectly tight and now you're dealing with the raw weight of the fish. And if you're using 20, 30 pound test and you don't give that some, some slack and you don't bow that rod down immediately, uh, there's going to be a pressure break and he's going to break your line. On, okay. Man. So uh, when you, you watch, you're fighting a fish, you're fighting a tarpon. If he starts to jump, you quick, you, you give him a little slack and you bow to him a little bit and it prevents those pressure breaks. But it's, you got to be thinking about it uh, or you're, you're going to miss it and you're going to, you have a lot of break offs. In fact, I got a, I have a ratio of about, we land about one tarpon for every 10 that we hook. So if you, if you hook a tarpon and he jumps off, you hook a tarpon and he spits the hook, you hook a tarpon and you miss him or he breaks the line, like don't feel bad. That is, that's tarpon fishing, all right? Especially when you're on the beach. Another thing that they have in their favor is their mouth is like literally trying to set a hook in this wood table. It's hard as a rock and there's only a few little spots where there's soft flesh. So you gotta get the hook set either in the corner of the mouth or there's a few little places in the top of the mouth where the hook will actually go in and stay in. But um, man, the tarpon, they're, they're, that's a bad fish, man. It is a bad fish. So if you hook one, get ready for a fight. All right, guys, so if you want to nice. hook a tarpon from the beach, nice? there's a few different strategies. You can use the artificial thing and you can sight cast for them because you will see them if you look for them during the summertime. But uh, another strategy is if you see the tarpon feeding on a bait school, whether it be pilchards or mullet or silver sides, uh, you know, you can use a flat line with a hook and throw it and actually sight cast for them with a live bait. That's a great way to do it. But a lot of times the tarpon are just swimming by and you don't see them. So if you want to soak a bait out there, you know, live bait is key. They will eat a dead bait. Now, some of my best Tarp and action have been with a, a, a half of a ladyfish. So if you catch a big ladyfish like that and you cut it in half, you put a big circle hook through the bottom lip and you launch it out, you know, that's actually a great tarp and bait. They will scavenge if they, if they can. The bait's got to be super fresh or they won't touch it. Typically, live bait is key. Uh, if it's the silver side run, you got to match the hatch with tarpon. If they're feeding on mullet, you got to give them mullet. If you're feeding on silver sides, you got to give them a silver side. If you try to give them a mullet when they're feeding on silver sides, they won't look twice at your mullet. It's so bizarre. They're very, very particular when they get locked into feeding on a certain type of fish. You got to give them that fish. You got to give them that bait or use a lure that looks like that type of bait or you won't get touched. So live bait is key. We hook a lot of them on live pilchards, you know, those nice four, five, six inch pilchards. You hook the pilchard behind the pectoral fins. You get a, um, you know, I would use at least a five foot, uh, 40 to 80 pound fluorocarbon or monofilament leader. I'd use fluorocarbon. Uh, I would use at least a five foot leader. And, you know, you're going to need a weight to get it out there, but the weight causes you a problem because as soon as that fish hits and starts to jump, that weight is starts flopping around and it can help throw the hook. So, uh, the more weight you have, the more struggle you have landing the fish, but you also need the weight to get it out there because if the fish, if the tarpon aren't feeding on a school of bait really close to shore, they're typically hanging out 75, 100 yards offshore at least, out past the sandbar. So you gotta be able to have enough weight to whip it out there and get your bait out there unless you're using a kayak or something to bring, in, bring your bait out. When you're fighting the tarpon, you gotta be ready. Because a tarpon hits and it's violent, man. It's like you got to be standing next to your rod. And if it hits and you have it in free spool with the clicker, um, it, you have about literally 1.5 seconds to pick that rod up and set the hook. If you miss it, he's going to feel the tension. He's going to jump and he's going to spit the hook. 100%. You know, you're going you're gonna to fail if you're not ready, if you're not paying attention to your rod. Hello. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Great. We'll put a bait on and help you. Good. Good. Oh, my goodness, babe. I've never seen anything like this. There's a... 
insane. Feeding frenzy, Tarpon, come on, babe. Insane feeding frenzy, Tarpon, come on. Oh, I just got a tarpon on. Yeah, yeah. Ah. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, no, he's off. He's off. He's off. Here you go. Yeah. So my suggestion is focus, man. Focus on your rod. Don't be more than 20 feet away. It can be really easy to get distracted on the beach. You know, you're chasing bait. You're doing something. You're re-rigging or whatever. And all of a sudden you hear, Wah! and then you run over. By the time you get there, the tarpon done spit it a long time ago. So be ready. You set your bait out in the tarpon zone. Be ready because when it goes, man, you got you to gotta put it in gear, set the hook, and get ready to bow to the Silver King. Okay? So I would use at least 30 to 40 pound test um, when you're fishing for tarpon. And you got to have at least 300 yards of line on your reel. Uh, a braid would be great because you can fit more line on a reel. I would use, make sure your line quality is good. There's no frays in your line. Uh, make sure your line is new or you're going to lose your fish. They're going to break you off because it's a very, very powerful fish. You got to have laser sharp hooks, guys. Sharpen your hooks. Buy super sharp hooks. Even sharpen them even more because that you want to get that, that rock hard mouth. You need to get that hook set in there uh, big time. Make sure your leader material is good. Don't skimp out on materials if you're tarpon fishing. It's gonna cost you fish, 100%. Make sure you spend a couple extra dollars, get the right tackle, get the right gear, it'll help you catch tarpon. When you get your tarpon hooked up, one of the biggest mistakes that I've personally made when tarpon fishing is you have this urge to tighten down on your drag and get them in quicker, okay? Don't do that. If you tighten your drag down, you're putting so much more pressure on your knots, on your line, on your hook. Um, the, the trick with tarpon is keep your drag as loose as you can. He's gonna take more line out, but you, you're gonna let him take the line. Just, if he starts to take, just kind of point your rod at him a little bit and just let him fight and just let him take and let your drag do its job. You gotta have a good drag system on your reel and you have, a, have to have a lot of line. He'll eventually get tired after he jumps 20, 30 times and takes 150 yards of line. But then you start bringing him in. Uh, you have the temptation of tightening down the drag once you start to get a little bit more confident. Just don't do that. Don't do that. Because he's going he's gonna to get a second wind. He's going to get a gulp of air. And he's going to go again. And, and if you have your drag too tight, you're going to lose your fish. So just be patient with the tarpon. you got to be patient. you got to be ready to bow when he jumps. And when he gets to the shoreline, don't be fooled to thinking he's given up because tarpon do not like to touch the sand, okay? When he gets shallow and he starts to sense that he's going to touch that shore, he'll take a gulp of air and he will bolt out. And don't be surprised if he dumps another 50 to 100 yards of line. And then you're like, oh my goodness, I, we almost had him. And then he's way the heck out there again and you got to bring him all the way in. That's part of tarpon fishing. Got to be patient. Got to get them in. And now, once you have them in, you got to treat the fish uh, with tenderness and care because a tarpon will exhaust itself before it comes in. I mean, it's going to fight you to its death. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that you revive the fish properly before you let them go. And in fact, it's actually Ill unlawful for you to take the fish out of the water. So if you have a fish bigger than 40 inches, which is about that big, so if you have a you know, 80, 90, 100 pound tarpon, he's gonna be larger than that, he's gonna be six foot. You, you can't take him out of the water because, and here's why, you, you pick the fish up, we wanna take a picture, we wanna show off or whatever, and we have our hands underneath the guts of the fish. Now the weight of the, of the fish is pressing down on, on your hand or on the beach when it's on the sand. and and. That it wasn't designed to hold its own weight out of the water. So you got to keep the fish in the water. It's, it's what will help the fish survive. Um, now, another suggestion I'll give to you is when you're releasing your fish, don't go out to your neck and sit there and play with it because large hammerhead sharks and bull sharks uh, have a tendency to come and uh, find your, your tarpon. So I wouldn't want to be out neck deep 
with an injured tarpon, uh, you know, if you're going to revive your fish, come in knee deep water and kind of walk them along where it's as safe as you can, where you can get the fish revived, get, spend your time reviving that fish before you let him go. Make sure he's kicking nice and good because if you let him go and he starts to do the belly up thing, you haven't revived him enough. Let's treat these tarpon with respect. They deserve it. Guys, we, it is unlawful to harvest a tarpon, so do not bring them in and take them home with you. You'll get written up. You, you'll get in trouble. Uh, we got to release these fish. Uh, you know, that's, that's the law. So please don't plan on keeping the fish. It's not a fish that is good for eating. So uh, guys, tarpon deserve our respect. They are an amazing fish. We love them. We enjoy them. It is my absolute number one favorite fish to catch on the beach uh, because when you hook a 100-pound tarpon, you will have a large crowd of people saying, what the heck are you doing catching this massive fish where I was just swimming? So guys, if you learned something, give me a thumbs up. I know there's plenty more information on tarpon fishing. I just gave you some of my basics. Comment down below if there's any other tips you you know you think we should talk about. Uh, any other videos you want to see? Uh, I'd be happy to hear from you. And um, give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Let's get out there and rip some bony little tarpon lips, guys. Take care. God bless and watch your lip. Bye now.